what I would say about my work, it is the combination, the, the coexistence of animal and human, and that overlap. I and mean, I consider them somewhat separated, because our city, I think culturally they're separated. That, you know, we are human beings, we are not animals. Everything we do is to contain the animal through intellect, right? Mm -hmm. And so problems arise because of that. We don't deal with aging, which is part of being an animal, right. or dying, or you know any of these things. Mm -hmm. And it's a the you know my work is figurative, but just barely. It's barely tethered. It's tethered with a head. It's tethered with a hand. It's tethered with a tit. Not but necessarily the, in proportion. Not either. in proportion. Also, skin color is gone. It is they are compositions of line, marks. color, marks, form, which I consider basically uh, experiential scarification. It's all the things you, you pass through right. that shift you. What, what point, and in terms of evolution, at what point is there a moment when evolution is triggered? You know, what experiences you pat going through your life and here's your environment, there are particular things that create a shift are you you're talking animal. about person, personal evolution, or are you talking about I'm personal talking about evolution people. and I'm talking about in a human in a human being that exists here and now, and why at this particular moment there's a change? Is there something that they right. there was an experience that they had what's that the shifted? What's the catalyst? Right. I'm interested in that, and I'm interested in watching, like going back to the woman in Walmart. What at what point? Which something trigger in that her. self awareness? The self awareness be triggered. Did, you know, to, it could to have really been you standing next to her going like, "Have you ever thought about plucking <laughs> those hairs on your chin?" <laughs> it could have, but but the the, the human and the human person, right? The politeness, right? Overwhelmed exactly. the animal, which would be just to you know go over there and pluck them myself. <laughs> Like, like picking, you know, like the monkeys, right. you know, nitpicking. Nitpicking. Yeah, nitpicking. Right. We, you know, and so no, I would not, I, the, the politeness overwhelmed. But I do watch people wherever I go. That's my primary well, I would, research, and I, like, impose who they are. But I want to get back to your mark making, because talking about the haptic process, excuse me, uh, excuse me, so I had to do that as part of the conversation. Talking about the haptic process in in visual art, yes, you know the mark making, and, and I, I now I've never heard you talk about this before, but it, ha, have it be about scarification. But it, then I, then I'm thinking, okay, you're the one who you're the scar of fire, yes, and the marks become then the scars, and it's like so. What happens in terms of process? And I know this is really difficult to talk about when you're doing visual art, but it's like. At that haptic moment, I know you work really intuitively. Yes. But also, there's obviously, if you can look at the work, it's very organic. Yes. You can tell that things grow out of other things. Can you just talk about how that, that happens? How it happens. And it, it really sp try, you know, the moment you're sitting there, you're standing there, or whatever you're doing, drawing. Well, I have to begin by saying that I don't think that it's singular in a moment. I think it's more. The moment of drawing is this very central place, and there are layers that surround that moment of collecting. So I am very deliberate, always, in whatever I'm doing, that I am collecting information, collecting it in a very deliberate way, memorizing it. And I think when I'm drawing, I, I move into a different mental space, and I have absolute trust right. in what I am doing. Right. And so I may, you know, as I begin, maybe a way, more sort of awake in a linear way, and I'll I'll think about, for example, seeing a wasp, and then I'll think about seeing a person who is missing a couple of teeth and the color of their teeth. For example, when I was in New York, I saw break dancers in the subway, and they were all African American men all slightly different colors of skin. Some had missing teeth, but the movements of their body, incredible. 
and that moment shifted to seeing a woman in a hot pink jacket, and that moment shifted into seeing someone with gray hair that was perfectly went from dark to white, and so that will be a beginning point. The right. palette, the form, the drawing will begin, and it will evolve. And the relationships, the interconnections between all of the those interconnections, images. that moment in time, and those people. Right. And so I will take these fragments, these parts, in a, a very linear way, and just begin the drawing. Maybe just with, with the form and the palette. And I will think about the wasps and the way they move. They're swarming, their sound. And then I'll think about the, the break dancers, dancers. Uh -huh. and their pieces of their body, a, a fragment of a moment in movement. And those will then begin to collect and create the drawing. And I will slip out of that linear thinking into just making marks. And then the drawing informs itself as it moves. Mm -hmm. Like this mark, well, I will then respond. Here will be these marks, and we'll respond over here according to what. Right. But it's still connected to all. It's connected. Everything that's come before, correct? Yeah. 